بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نومبر ٹوئنٹی of this AT, let's call it just AT, and that does not have the Casparian state. In the SGN3 mutant, ammonium ions can enter the xylem without entering the xylem of root cells because they don't have a Casparian strip. So they can enter the xylem without entering the cytoplasm. The bar shows the scientist results. So we have uptake of ammonium ions into xylem. We have the low concentration of ammonium and we have high concentration of ammonium and then we have the non mutant and the mutant says there's not much difference between them and then in the mutant in the low concentration of sodium again we have like here the non mutant and the mutant now you have to look at very carefully and then it says which conclusions is correct which conclusions is correct you have to read all four of them and then think which one is the correct answer fewer ammonium ions enter the xylem when they have to move through the cytoplasm of the root cells How, we don't see that anywhere more ammonium ions enter the xylem at low soil concentration no that's wrong this is more ammonium this is less ammonium this is more ammonium this is the low soil concentration the casparian strip the casparian strip acts as a the casparian strip acts as a barrier to reduce the movement of ammonium ions into the xylem The loss of the Casparian strip has little effect on the, so you know the loss of the Casparian strip was SGN3. So that is why the answer is D. Because the loss of the Casparian strip, there's not much difference here. Has little effect on the movement of monion ions into the xylem. And that was true for low concentration as well as high concentration. Then question number 27, which row correctly shows processes required for the movement of water from a root hair? So this is the root hair cell into it to the atmosphere. So cohesion, diffusion and evaporation. So correctly, so we have all of them. Water moves into the xylem by diffusion. Why? Because xylem does not have a cell membrane. Into the root hair cell, of course, is osmosis. Then from cell to cell, through the plasma, this matter is diffusion. So cohesion, diffusion, and evaporation for the water to become vapor and then the water vapors to go into the atmosphere. So all three are concerned. Then it says, question number 28, which process can be carried out by a mature red blood cell? Active transport, yes, that's the answer, but why not cell division, doesn't have a nucleus, phagocytosis, no, cell, red blood cell cannot do phagocytosis, protein synthesis doesn't have a nucleus, does not have any ribosomes. Question number 29, the photomicrograph shows three white blood vessels labeled X, Y and Z, which correctly identifies, I, I do a very simple thing, the one which is a kidney shaped Z, that has to be a monocyte. So Z has to be a monocyte, that's how I figure it out. And that was the only one Z was a monocyte. So question number 29, the answer is B. Question number 30, when a blood vessel is damaged, it can result in problems of the body, in the body. Which row identifies the blood vessel and that could have been damaged? Blood is not being distributed to the organs that need it. You know the organ, when it reaches an organ, the artery becomes a muscular artery. Blood is not returning to the heart, has to be a vein. And it's collecting in the organs, the vein. So every organ has an artery and a vein which is coming out of it. Well, I'm not saying here, here, it's coming out here. 
So there's the renal artery and then this is the renal artery and this is the renal vein. So blood surges mean that relatively constant blood pressure is not maintained. That would have to be the elastic artery. So that is why question number 30, the answer is D. Question number 31, the diagram shows how tissue fluid is formed. So there's blood pressure, water potential, arterial and venous and what is the net pressure causing tissue fluid to flow out of the capillary in at the arterial end? This is the arterial end. So 4.3 minus 1.3 is 1.0. 4.3 this here and 1.1 minus 1.3 is 0 0.2. So it's 1.2. So the answer is C. You see the difference between 4.3 and 3.3 is 1. And difference between 1.3 and 1.1 is 0 0.2. So add that and it's 1.2. Question number 32. What happens when carbon dioxide is transported by red blood cells? Hydrogen carbonate ions move into the red blood cells and chloride ions move into the plasma. Chloride ions move into the red blood cell and bind to hemoglobin. Wrong. Chloride ions move into the red blood cell. Hydrogen, no. Chloride ions don't move into the red. Uh, they, yes, they do move into the red blood cell, but they don't bind to anything. It's not chloride ions move into the red blood cell and hydrogen ions move. No, by ACO3 negative ions move into the plasma. So that is why the answer is D. Chloride ions move into the red blood cell and hydrogen carbonate ions move into the plasma. 33, what is typically found in the trachea, bronchi and bronchioles? A ciliated epithelium, cartilage is only present in some, not all of them, the trachea and the bronchus, so it is ciliated epithelium. The photomicrograph shows a section through part of the human gas exchange system. Which structure is shown? Oh, it's a bronchus. Because you can see plates of cartilages. You can see this. Question number 35. Which factors are required for the efficient diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the human gas exchange system? Is 2 and 3 only? This is wrong. Clean air and warm entering the lung. What does that matter? Maximized area for exchange surface and minimum distance between alveoli and blood. Then coming to question number 36. Which statements correctly identify why it is difficult to eliminate TB? Now TB has nothing to do with clean water. So this is totally wrong. So the answers are humans can be infected but can be inactive, dormant stage, they remain inside the bacteria, remain inside the human beings and a number of drug resistant strains. So this is also correct. So the answer is D. Clean water we have to do is with cholera, not with TB. Tuberculosis is caused by an airborne droplet infection or by eating meat of infected cattle. Question number 37. Bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. What can help to reduce the development of antibiotic resistance in bacteria? Use specific antibiotic instead of wide spectrum. Use antibiotics to treat viral infections. Develop new antibiotics. Now, we do not give antibiotics in viral infections. That's all rubbish. So that is why the answer is C, 1 and 3 only. Develop new antibiotics and use specific antibiotics, not just wide spectrum. You must know, okay, this is the bacteria, do a culture and sensitivity and then figure out which antibiotic is going to kill it and then give that antibiotic. Now coming to question number 38, it's a very long question. The diagram shows one way of testing the effect of antibiotic on bacteria, petri dish with nutrient agar containing bacteria, colonies of bacteria and then disco filter paper soaked in antibiotic and then grown for five days. And then diameter of the zone measured every day for five days. The table shows the result of uh, testing five different types of uh, bacteria. 
and zones this is the important part zones of less than 13 mm show the presence of resistant anti resistant bacteria so this is less than 13 this is less than 13 and this is less than 13 on day 5 which statement can be supported by this data only types 2 3 and 4 of the bacteria show resistance to the antibiotic it said less than 13 so this is what you should have figured out that less than 13 was only 2 3 and 4 question number 39 some responses made by cells of the immune system to a pathogen is listed mitosis recognize the pathogen produce memory cell secrete enzyme which responses are correct for phagocytosis phagocytes in gulf release enzymes digest the bacteria is inside here the red thing so which responses are correct only two and four recognizes pathogen and secretes enzyme that's it the rest of it is not clear mitosis never takes place phagocytes do not divide by mitosis and they do not produce memory cells i wish they would but they don't Question number 40, the last question. Question number 40 is some vaccines do not contain antigens. The vaccines contain a molecule of mRNA. That's what we were being given in the COVID. Cells in the immune system use the mRNA molecule to make a protein antigen. The statement describes the stages of how mRNA vaccine work when they enter a cell of the immune system. B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte with complementary receptors bind to the protein. Lymphocytes differentiate into memory cells that have long-lasting immunity. Ribosomes translate the mRNA. That is the thing which you have to understand. The mRNA is going to be first translated into a protein. So three had to be first. And then four. The cell displays the protein on its cell surface membrane. So then it was four. And then it was one B and T lymphocytes with complementary receptors bind to the protein. And then lymphocytes differentiate into memory cells giving lasting immunity. So that is why the answer was, the answer to 40 was C.